Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, hi, Halucha. Thanks for watching. Glad you're here. Glad you're catching up on the show. I know you're not here live, but you'll be seeing this. Uh, this week, folks, we've got Ian Gibson. Hi. We've got Christopher Elliott. Welcome back to me and Ian's F1 podcast. Today we're breaking down everything that's gone to Man, you know, I was against the idea at the start, but I, there's, you know, we could do it. We could God, do no, it. No, stop. No F1 know, look, on this podcast. The The thing about F1 is that it's actually, once you get into it, there is so much entertaining stuff going on outside. Did you hear the latest controversy, if I may? Um, what is happening? Depending on, no. who, depending on who it involves, I might not be able to talk about it. It was it was a previous a previous uh, Grand Prix a previous champion who won in a previous year who is Brazilian I believe he called Lewis Hamilton who is a seven time world champion tied with the most is still in the sport he called him the N word <laughs> and Excuse everybody was like, me like it was like it was Whoa. like a video from two years ago that leaked out he basically used the Brazilian version of the N word and everybody was just like whoa whoa oh so he's like they're like you're never coming back to any races ever again and the whole sport's like we don't like racism we don't like racism and there's like the sport is incredibly drivers. racist <laughs> and there's junior drivers it's happened multiple times now where a junior driver goes on twitch and says the n-word or something just as bad and then gets dropped by their team pretty much immediately because they're like, you're I, on Twitch, you idiot. Why are I, you saying this? I, I am not speaking as a representative of the company's Endeavor, IMG, or WME oh. on any matters of F1 or anything wow. of the variety, including F2 and any clients to represent. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, I did hit it. I was I was surprised. My point is, if we no, did do I don't, I don't, I don't know if you did, but I'm just not. I'm not risking it. <laughs> I get in trouble. But I think uh, just to to wrap up the F1 podcast, the funny thing about F1 <sighs> is that you don't even have to talk about the races. There's so much. No, who gives a shit? There was a race earlier this year where Yemeni rebels hit a oil facility seven miles from the track in the middle of one of the practice sessions, and they were like. Should we still have the race? And F1's like, yes, we print money over here in Saudi Arabia. And the yep. drivers just hold up for four hours in a room <laughs> past midnight going, should we all strike? Because this does not feel safe with missiles literally flying at the track. And they had the race anyways. There's so much craziness outside of the actual race. that Lance Troll is an idiot. Podcast. <laughs> yes, 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 he is. He's not even right. a good rich playboy. He's just an idiot. Anyways. Is that what is this the first episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's restarted the fucking podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. It's local chat. It's episode 78. We've got Ian and Chris. They're not allowed to speak Hi. anymore. I'm Hello. here to talk to you about video games. It's what we love. We don't like F1, we don't like racing, and we certainly don't like a certain word that was mentioned several times. Will is racist. <laughs> Despite in a yeah. shortened fashion. Charles the card now. <laughs> Um, folks, we're here to talk about video games. Uh, we're here to talk about all sorts of lovely, lovely things. So why don't we get the heck started? I'm Love going it. first because I'm better than all of you. Um, it's sexy. It's, it's commanding. I'm into it. I don't mean to brag, but I've been playing RimWorld a lot. <laughs> <Ian. laughs> Will, Will Crosby <laughs> play RimWorld in this uh, economy? Is this, is this because of the console edition announcements? No, actually, that surprised me. I was very excited about that, uh, and I was trying to evangelize to some people at work to get into the game. Um, I have actually been playing because I've been watching a YouTuber who does a lot of challenges and kind of made me antsy to play with some more mods and stuff like that. So I started a new game, got a lot more mods installed, trying to like change up the way I play uh, and not do the same old shit I always do. So... I really wasn't going to talk about that much. I just wanted to annoy you. When's that you. RimWorld uh, series coming back that I uh, we played the VO for? So desperately want more of it. Um, I've actually been toying around with recording some more RimWorld stuff. Um, I'm just trying to find the right, like, sort of challenge -y thing to do. So I don't, like, end up having to do a lot of recording, I guess is the best yeah. way to put that. I I had a very strong urge to pay to play dwarf fortress earlier this week and like my problem is i want to play that game again but i'm just waiting for the steam edition yeah. i know it will be worth it mm. 
but it's also I don't want to say it's been delayed because they never put a date on it. But at the same time, it's taken a long time and I desperately need Dwarf Fortress on Steam. I, uh, I, I, yeah. I gave I, I booted up XCOM 2 again. Will part of the thing we were doing. Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> and I played like four or five hours of it. And like I just like it wasn't that I wasn't having a fun time or it wasn't going well, but like the load times in that game <clears throat> and like just like the amount, of, the amount of time wasting there is. I was like, I, I can't do this again. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's not a good game, you know? I've I've played the intro. Incorrect. Shit, fuck off. I've played the first half of XCOM 2 three times, and I can't do it again. Like J- Jason and I have <laughs> talked about this. It has some of the worst difficulty ramping in video games. Yeah, that and, like, it, if that campaign was more roguelite, roguelike, actually, um, I think it would be a more fun game. Like if there was just a mode to be like put so me if it was in this more like world. Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, I I think I think there's ways like there's ways XCOM three is gonna be really great if it oh, ever yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but who knows? Uh, uh, for I mean, there's this big vault of money. It's funny. I was just looking at XCOM stuff um, because there's an open XCOM one and two that uh, yeah. someone was posting for like different open uh, stuff. And I didn't know this existed, so I was actually there's look there's those up. jagged jagged alliance series. That one's a classic. I believe they yeah. made they made, actually did they make a jagged alliance three? Anyways, that series is same same vein as XCOM, um, and of course Mario plus Rabbids two Sparks of Hope or whatever no, it's called that's same. coming soon. Thought you were gonna say Valkyria Chronicles, but nope. That one's good. That one's good. Um, I always want to play it because I've heard great things, but. Yeah, that's one. That's is that the World War Two ish looking one? Yeah, and like when you World go to shoot, anime. when you go to shoot, you actually are controlling the shot as opposed to relying yeah, on the percentage. I've I've thought about playing that. Um, it's a cool game. Speaking about thinking of playing things, <laughs> I have thought and played uh, Assass- Assassin's Fuck. I'm <laughs> sorry, Resident <laughs> Evil Two Remake. Um, I had played it when it first came out. I played through Leon's story. I did not. I'm so I'm playing through Claire's story now. I did not realize how wildly different it is. Um, hey, you don't know about the 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 path A B shit. I I just thought it would be the same thing ish, but it is very very different, and mm. I didn't know that. Uh, so I've been pleasantly surprised because I was like, oh, I'll replay this, but as Claire. Um, and it's been really fun to play through that. Uh, I'm, uh. I don't even know how far I am in it, uh, but I've been trying to like haul it and stuff, uh, and not be scared, which has been proven difficult a couple times. But I'm actually uh, making through it pretty well. Um, this was all because for work I had to do some Resident Evil stuff, and then they had announced the up up res, which I watched through the whole Digital Foundry video for them to just say don't use the uh hdr or the ray tracing mode <laughs> they're like yeah just don't oh. do it on the on the xbox or playstation 5 it it why why because it's not yeah. a solid 60 <clears throat> even even so do they have the option to just turn on hdr or is uh, it so tied? sorry 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 not hdr high frame rate hfr oh um okay, okay yeah gotcha, my apologies gotcha. the hfr they said works really well um if you have a tv capable of doing 120 hertz um the 4k isn't it's like stays in around the 45s uh and does pretty well getting rid of like the i think it's ambient occlusion which is that like uh reflection stuff uh but they're like we just don't recommend it because it can go down to like 20 during cutscenes sometimes yikes i was like okay i'll just play in 4k like i'm not playing this game because it's absolutely gorgeous anyways like the re engine looks good regardless something that i Um, like I'll talk about this a little later. Uh, I don't understand about games in general. Is why aren't cutscenes just a fucking MP4? Like, am I? Yeah. Uh, is there a reason that that's not like? So part rendering. of it is the transition. Yeah. If your if your engine's not good, there's a noticeable transition, and you yeah. can't do any fancy transitions. You know, like in and out, like Death Stranding or Red Dead Redemption Two has. Um, yeah, but those games have cutscenes that don't lag like a motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, yes. I know exactly yeah. why you're bringing this up, Chris, because of one of the games you played, um, mm-hmm. and I agree in that situation. Oh, I oh well, is it the one that I listed with cutscenes or with no cutscenes? <laughs> I wonder which. Because <laughs> there are certainly there are certainly huge differences between the cutscenes and the non cutscenes in that game, but both of them are rendered, uh, and it just seems like and every time you cut to a new scene, it loads everything in. 
which is great. Yep. Um, so, anyways, that's all I've been playing. Uh, not much else. I, I'm is trying. This your first time touching RET remake? No, I, I like I said, I, I played through Leon when it first came out, but only and Leon, so now I'm playing through Claire. Uh, yeah, because I, I kind of never put it together that it was different. Um, I'm on the search for like a new good game to play. Um, Dragon Quest Eleven really wasn't doing it for me. Uh, it it got there really? in certain ways. Um, I just it it's not pulling me back is the problem uh, is it time is it i you know it may be time uh oh it may be time for persona 5 you'll oh. never see it coming it invented jazz will it invented it's, jazz it's so very it good it's the years of the jrpg thank you the uh, decade of the jrpg just yeah. a warning the tutorial doesn't suck, but the tutorial, I think I clocked it at literally like 10 or 12 hours before it like gives you oh, yeah. like full, complete control, but it's still 100% worth it. There's something to be said for games that are like, we are not afraid of our bullshit. Like, we're gonna, you're going to sit through our exhibition, you're going to watch our cutscenes, you're going to do all that shit. And like, Kojima is an example of that. And then there's an Atlas JRPG uh, where they're like, yeah. fuck you. Uh, Look at this tutorial. Go fuck yourself. You want to play a game? Kill yourself, you stupid asshole. <laughs> it's still it's still good though. It's not the worst tutorial, it's just very long. Oh no, it's it's the but second is it best. one is it released on Xbox yet? Or is it no. when is it coming? Uh, October. Oh, okay, that was that was ungodly. Oh, that that's was right, Xbox because that was in the just get it. It was it was it was right after Hollow Knight when everyone was like, No way on my PS5. Like, <laughs> How about I bring it to you? I've you got it on PS4. No, it's on sure PS5 thing. Plus. <laughs> it just, oh, it is? Yeah. I have it. It's right, in, currently installed on my PlayStation is it, 5. Is that Royal Persona or regular? Persona 5? Yeah. I think is it's that Royal, Royal or is that regular? I think it was, actually, I think it was a giveaway, <clears throat> like a gold game. I don't think I it's mean, on the I mean, Royal stars. is, that's pretty good. Honestly, honestly, look, give it a shot, but I'm putting a mandate down. If you're going to give it a shot, you have to play it for at least 15 hours. That gets you through Jesus. the tutorial. <sighs> it's the second best JRPG in the last decade. Maybe I'll stream it's really it good. too, just to make it less painful. It's a lot of streaming. It's um, painful. I've been trying to think of I'm games to stream. Real. Sorry, I'm taking up a little bit more time, but I I wanted to do a little thing here. Maybe you're talking because, about uh, apologize. Like Halucha mentioned playing through Luigi's Mansion, which I've never done. So I thought about maybe streaming that. I have my Wii U here uh, that has um I have the disc as well with the Wii U. Um, that's ready to go. Um, also, I have my currently spicy Wii U. <laughs> my spicy Wii U. I have seven games sitting in my Steam sale shopping cart uh, that I would like to play. Um, you know, I got a better idea. Seem very interesting. Just to interrupt this very uh, boring exposition of yep. yours. There's Go a game on our game of the year list that you will need to play at some point, anyways, per our agreement. I nobody never... saves the world. Now's the Wait, time. Give I it a shot, man. played nobody saves the world. Did you play, play again? A lot of it? Yeah, I played like eight or ten hours of it. Oh, played again, bitch. Because I remember the first time you only played a little bit of it and then you came back on. Okay. Uh, well, Crosby, I'd like to thank you for reminding me that the Summer Games Fest, the Summer Games uh, sale exists. I've yes. just purchased Valkyria Chronicle 4 for $10. Yay. Yeah, they had a couple games that I wanted that weren't on sale. Uh, but finally, Dusk is on sale, folks. The boomer shooter that we all want to play. Um, so I'm going to be playing that. There are a couple other, um, not I like Dusk specifically, and Elysium tale. <laughs> no, not Dusk and Elysium, Dust and Elysium. Tale. Oh, is that not called Dusk? Fuck. Or the, uh, Dust game from Ubisoft from Xbox Arcade where you like filled up the, oh, that game was great. Um, no, but I, I found a bunch of like hidden gems and stuff that I want to, I might do a stream where I like try each of them, uh, and check them out. So I'm excited for that. Uh, moving on, Ian Gibson, you've been playing a game. Hi. I'm, I just, I, I'm so happy for you to fire back in because I spent most of last week and some of this week organizing my cosplay files for this game and downloading really? things and purchasing things. Um, I, so, have, I, think I have some good ideas, so we should, we should, Ooh, we should get together. Kiss. Uh, I have been playing Death Stranding. This is my second time playing the game. I'd already beaten it once when it first came out. What's Just that one about? I think I played. I, I think I played about three hours of it when it first came out, and I was like, "It's funny because that game has a little bit of a slow start, and it yeah, does I'll a lot say." Of <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't know. It's it's not it's not super slow. It's just that it's like exposing you to different systems, and you've got to get back in the swing of a Kojima game, which is like like you said, lots of exposition and weird cutscenes. And there's a lot of stuff in the game that is cool once you build up your stats and get access to them. But like those first initial deliveries, when you're just like swaying around all over the place and you're in like a relatively boring area is is like the most boring game part of that entire game. And that lasts about three to four hours. <laughs> and so so for me, like the first time I played it, I literally got all the way up until you're about to get a vehicle. And then I stopped playing. And I only knew that because when I when I started playing it last week, I got all the way up to that point, and then I played like thirty minutes later, and it gave me the motorcycle, and I was like, "Oh, this game's much better now. This game's playable <laughs> now." Yeah, yeah. Like if I had played it for like three and a half hours, <laughs> then I would have enjoyed it probably the first time. But anyways, I'm I'm still really enjoying it. <clears throat> I don't know how much time I have in it. Uh, I just did the second battlefield. I think okay. I'm on like episode seven or eight. Uh, I'm, I think I'm almost done with the, the central region, which is the big part of the U.S. I like did a whole bunch of Rocky Mountain stuff. Um, I'm still really enjoying it. I actually last night I left work. I went to the couch and I sat down and I just played the game for like three hours straight. Nice. Um, and it was weird because I, I don't normally play a game that long. And I don't even want to say that I did it because I was so ra- wrapped into it and I wanted to do it. But I. I had just unlocked zip lines and I got to a point where I was like grooving with zip lines and I was, it was just like one more job, one more job. And it was like, like I was getting so good at this area. Like there's this one mission where they're like, Hey, you need to go get medicine and bring it back here. You have a 60 minute timer and we're taking away all your tools except for like these three things. And I was like, okay. And I did it in <laughs> five and a half minutes. <laughs> like I just like literally 90% of it was me like, using the zipline network I'd already set up. It was fantastic. Um, so I, I'm still having a lot of fun with it. I really appreciate the story. Like, I'm just going to start dropping some spoilers here, but like Uh-oh. the whole mama, the whole mama story, yeah. her and the BT baby. I'm like, hell yeah, man, that's a good story. Like, I feel like, like Kojima, like Kojima gets a bad rap for having wonky ass storylines and it's very easy to make fun of them when you say things like yeah she's got a ghost baby because she like gave birth on accident while the hack when the happening and the terrorist and the bridge fell on her and you're like it's so stupid but then you actually watch it and you're like damn kojima needs to make a fucking movie because he's he's good at like cinematography and like direction and like presenting all this stuff really well so it even though shocks this me to no end that he hasn't made a fucking movie I, he basically has, you know, with the amount yeah, of Metal Gear Solid Four. I played on. it. <laughs> yeah, zing, got him. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really enjoying it. I I do think I do still have some problems with the game. And I there, will say though, kind of, for every mama and like good written story, there's also vamp. Yeah, so, that's true. You know they Metal call Gear him vamp because he's because he's bisexual. <laughs> Who's vamp? Is that is, that's not in two? No, no, no. He's in oh, two okay, and. Okay. Four? Is he, I think is he, he is in three. Four. No. But this no, game, though, look, this bad. game's got a problem, though, which is that, like, uh, I have this theme running in my math last several years. I've said it over and over again, which is that triple A games are bad for video games. Like, this, this is an indie game, right? Like, this yeah. is a very unique concept. It's got some interesting stuff going on. And I talked about it last week about how the presentation is, like, over the top, you know, like crazy cut scenes, you know, A-list celebrities, etc. Um, and all sorts of like really nice environments, well-modeled animations, etc. But at its core, it's just an indie game. Like you're just doing package delivery and you have all these little things. But there's there's two things in it that suck, that are not well implemented and are just really annoying, which is the BTs and the mules. Like those are not interesting mechanics in the game. And I realized that they are like the number one and number two reason why I put the game away or why I hesitate to play the game because I, I want to go do packages. I want I want that idea of like my anxiety or nervousness is like, can I make it to that location? I've got to figure out how to scale this mountain with my limited number of supplies without dropping my cargo, like do it in an efficient manner. So I don't like it doesn't take me five hours to do it. It's like awesome. 
but I don't want to go through this stupid BT encounter field. I don't want to go through this yeah. stupid mule field because even though the mules are piss easy, it's still annoying, you know, because the thing goes off and then, okay, let me just run. Okay. They get to me. Okay. Let me just punch them in the face 10 times yeah. because they're just not going to be able to do anything more than that to me. And you just and kill it's, them. It's so they annoying. make giant craters. That's true. Yeah. So it's like it, it, it's one of those games where there's so much going for it, but I feel like the urge to make it a triple A title and to have like the scary enemy encounters and to be like, we got to put all this polish and stuff on top of it is actually hurting the game. The, so the insistence on having a combat system and like yeah. having all this shit as opposed to just letting it be Hideo Kojima's wacky package game. Exactly. Yeah. And, and like we talked last time, like like if this was an indie game, you would get to a delivery terminal. You would press a button. Boom. Menu. Select, select, select. Done. OK, you're done. But in this, it's like, no, we got to go into the animation. We got to have somebody calling you. We got to pop you out of the menu and have got to talk to Conan O'Brien. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it's all this stuff where it, like I'm not necessarily blaming Kojima for this. I think it's kind of the mindset that he's in and that a lot of yeah. the industry is in, which is I need to make my game a triple A game. And that means adding all this pointless fucking fluff on top of it that in the end drags it down watchdogs legion fantastic core concept so much so that i bought and played like 10 hours of that game and it sucked because the core concept worked but it had so much pointless fucking triple a fluff around it bad stories bad characters uninteresting environments etc all these useless mechanics on top that it ruined the game and i i wish i wish I wish game designers were committed enough to the interesting, unique stuff in their games that they could commit to that and not just feel like triple A pressure to be like, we've got to have incredible animations, awesome cutscenes, all these like, we got to have loot, we got to have collect a thumb, we got to have open world maps, etc. It's like, no, just commit. Find a good mechanic, iterate on that, commit to it, build the game from that. Yeah. Anyways, I'm off my soapbox. But one thing about Kojima is that he, like, if collect a thon shit, open world, combat all that crap he doesn't give a shit about but he wants those incredibly extensive animations he yeah. he he wants you to watch fucking i don't know 42 minutes of someone opening a can and making beans like that's that's kojima <laughs> would a fried fucking, egg kojima would I'm love to implement a full system where you have to cook a full meal and like flip the fucking <laughs> egg salt and pepper everything yeah i'm fine with that it's just the a little it's it's not as bad as Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's the type of thing where it's like, I want to do this interaction. And it's like, okay, well, watch this fucking two-second awesome animation we made for that specific interaction. And fucking it's like, no. skinning animals in Red Dead. God. Yeah. Skip, 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 skip. Uh, so it's like, yeah. I was Give just going to say. All the cutscenes. I love the cutscenes, but I don't need the fluff. I was just going to say. I agree with you on the mules and the BTs. The mules, at least, you can counteract the alarm. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah. I like, I got pretty good at doing. And, then, and they're useful. I think we both had the experience where, before we had the truck unlocked, we just stole it from the mules and used oh, yeah. it for a while. Yeah, Fuck. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but the BTs, Central, I think, like, you know, you're like, oh, it's a BT area, because they want me to go this way. Um, yeah. And they all feel really, really it. pigeonholed and forced. Yeah, because yeah. uh, there were times like where I was just like driving a truck. The truck would get sucked down. I would fall out of the truck, and then I would just and like just run for it. No, uh, yeah, I would like push. I forget, like push the BT away or whatever. Then just get back in the truck, drive a little bit more. It would capture yeah. me again. I would fall out and just keep redoing that because I was like, I don't want to yeah. fight this giant <laughs> stupid thing. I'm not doing this, Hideo. You can't I, make me. I will say he made all of the BT quote unquote boss fights super easy by just having the other people throw stuff to you when you need it, and it was always great. Yeah. Because there and there's just, stuff all over the level yeah, as well. Yeah, there's stuff yeah. everywhere, and I think those are some of the easiest boss fights compared to his other uh, other games, which actually 4 was pretty yeah. easy. Yeah. And 3. Two, 1 and 2 suck. Um, Metal Gear. Anyways, I'm glad you're playing Death Stranding. I wish, I so wish uh, we could edit together you talking to your uh, 2018, 2019 self uh, about this and seeing if uh what we could make make of it uh because hey, yeah hey, hey mr crosby do you know how this game ends what death stranding don't fucking spoil it for me sorry Jesus. mr gibson do you know how this game ends my bad uh My i don't think off. i remember 
I do know there's some things coming, but um, I'm very excited to see how this fucking this guy of all people takes the ending of this stranding. Yeah, I, I'm on board. I, I'm on board with the story a lot more than I thought I would be. So, die hard, man. Um, it's gonna be great. <laughs> excited. <laughs> uh, Sam Porter Bridges. Uh, Chris, please tell me about your quarry and how neon white it is. You can skip. You can skip the quarry. We already talked about it. I want to know about neon white because I feel like I no, need to buy this. No, no, I need Chris to second the quarry. But did we talk about the quarry last week on this program? No, I talked Will, about it two weeks uh, ago and I put it on the game of the year list. Yeah, he said it's number one with a bullet. I did not. It's say not. That. And I'll get to that. Um, it's not. And I'll get to that. The Quarry is the best game Supermassive has made since Until Dawn. It's not a super high caliber. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But Because uh, the, the middle one sucked. But it is. This one just feels like, hey, it's Until Dawn 2. The thing you all wanted the entire time. It's got Grace Zabriskie in it being Peter Stormare from the first game. It's got weird shit in the forest. It's got horny teenagers. It's got all your horror tropes. It's what you want. It has some questionable engine choices, is what I will say. Yeah. This game on my computer, which is quite beefy, loads like a big pile of turds. And I know for a fact this is an optimization issue because everyone that has it on PS5 and Xbox says it runs totally fine. So the game is just optimized like duty butt. But that's not what anyone cares about. When I'm actually playing the game, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. It's very good. The 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 it could be a, it could be a little more jump scary. Yeah. I feel like like the, like like I think they pride themselves a little too much on not just doing jump scares, but every once in a while, mix me up a little bit, you know. Um, I don't love the hold a to hold your breath thing. It's yeah. very reminiscent of the hold the light bar still one from the first one. I do Lost, I do like sucked. how easy they make QTEs though. But they're also yes. so easy that you can still fuck them up. I, 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 I don't. I kind of. I, I miss the face buttons. I kind of don't like the stick thing. Yeah. I, I, when so you, when you said the stick, like you're, you're talking about the stick is all the QTEs are on the stick. Right yeah. stick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's only buttons. it's only one direction. Like you just hit it in that direction. Yeah. 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 Oh, but, but the direction changes. It's not yeah, the swirl. Changes. It's and like it gives intuitive. You, so it's like if you have to go so over a thing, time. you go up. Um. Yeah. Uh, but I, okay. just to catch you up, my opinion on it, I think it's better than Until Dawn, uh, only because I think currently. it fixes so many problems with Until Dawn. Uh, like, I like that you can just pick up the object and you don't have to do the weird, like, like oh, let me look at the oh, weird hey, yeah, part yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and you can look at. Oh something. no, the cards. The cards I think are a way better system because yeah, like cards I, are great. I just, just get it over with. I don't. I don't care about this really. Yeah, and what's her face? George Costanza's stepmother, mother-in-law, is great in those uh, gypsy scenes. Um, Grace Zabriskie. Yeah, George Costanza's mother-in-law. <laughs> I um, forgot that that's who that was. I forgot she was inside. <laughs> all I know about her. <laughs> I, um, Twin Peaks. I think oh, I've never seen Twin Peaks. Yeah. Uh, I like good TV. Um, the actors, uh, I think, are all great. I, the only thing is, it's totally the engine. Like scenes will cut. Every all the textures are popping in. Yeah, uh, it's rough. I had hair go a little bit wild on a quick resume resume one time on the Xbox. I, I've had um, there's a there's a cut scene with Abby inside the pool house. You can probably get it from there. Where her hair yes. fucking oh, freaked okay. the fuck out. So that's where it happened with me. So it's interesting to see it happen to you on PC. And we and we didn't quick resume. We were just playing, homie. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um. I also I uh I really liked just like the way they um sort of oh, crap. I, as I'm talking, the, the point is going away from me. Anyways, I like the quarry. I, I, it's it shaped up really have you, well. I think, have you completed it? Uh, yeah, I beat it. Karen and I beat I, it. I, we're gonna go through it again because the amount of stuff that could have changed is kind of mind boggling yeah. in my brain. Um, but overall, I was very into it. We we just finished the whole sequence in the jail cells. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, like the the. Hey, the flashback sequence, whatever. Um, and that I actually think is my biggest complaint about this game so far. That sequence is way the fuck too long. Yeah, it's it, like it, it could it needs to be less than half of how long it currently is. Yeah, like I get why it is that big, but I think 
I think splitting that up into way earlier and then the conclusion of it way later would have, have a made solution it. for it. Split it up and like keep it as is, keep it the same length, but we're cutting between them and like the backstory and Jacob because he's not presently in the pool house. He's also right. figuring it out. If we had like gone back and forth, so we're getting like piece of story, piece of story together, that would have worked out fine. Yeah. Until Dawn did that with um when what's her Emily's in the mines and Chris is upside with the the fire guy with the shotgun. They're both learning the story at the same uh, time. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I think that would have worked out yeah. a lot better. Um yeah. But of all, all acting's great, game is fun. It's better exactly than the what dark I wanted pictures, it to be. For sure. Yes. I've mean, I only played Man of Medan with you. Um yeah. and we didn't love it. <laughs> No, it was fun, but we didn't love it. Uh, anyway, tell me about Neon White, because I do want to hear about Neon White. Neon White is the is my game of the year currently. This could change. Ooh, interesting. Um, this game fucking rocks. And the, I, I really, really hope that at the Game Awards, this wins the best indie game. And not like, like, like say, even, even, this is, even if Hollow Knight came out this year, I think this should win the best indie game because this is ex a perfect example of what the fuck in a like high caliber indie game should be. Here is a weird concept fleshed out to its utter maximum and perfected. This is a card based ghost run a ghost runner esque like time trial shooter dasher puzzle solver. Um. And all of those elements are kind of weird, but they all come together really, really well. And like the wrapper that the game is in where like you have to like get presents for like the kind of like persona s dating simmy thing that goes on the uh, S links. Um, and like you have to there, there's multiple mini objectives to complete in each level, but each level is so bite sized. Um, it's just it's just it just fucking works. This is a game where you, like, as soon as you pick it up and do two levels, you're like, I get it. I get the appeal. Now all you have to do is keep introducing new ways this puzzle format works and it will be refreshing. And then that works the whole ass way through the game. Ian, Ian Gibson, you look confused. Questions? Um, no, I'm just trying to decide. I almost bought the game about a minute ago. I highly recommend I'm it. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I finish Death Stranding and then I Smart. will buy it. Smart. Um, this is, it, it's, uh... it's super easy to pick up a down good. Uh, I was just going to say, this is Ben Esposito, right? This yeah, real is, quick, just one yeah. more. Just, yep, go ahead. You being a smartass? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I um, like the eruption chain we have going. Yeah. Um, I can kick no, him it's, out. It's, it's, ben, it's Ben Esposito, um, who I think is like currently going to the weirdest guy making games. Um, he's just fucking nuts. Like, I follow him on social media. He's just a fucking weird dude. Um, <laughs> and he, and like, he's... He's kind of what would ha happen if, like, nobody ever put a leash on Kojima. And, like, he just keeps swapping genres of games. And, like, he doesn't care. <laughs> um, he, like, he makes yeah. his games pretty much, like, with, like, one or two other people. It's like, no one, no one really tells him no. Um, and I'll, something that I actually... I said that I said that a ben message when I played Donut County, which I actually gave Game of the Year when it came out. But also, fuck all came out that year, so. Um, True. Ben Epstein might actually be the best dialogue writer in games. Um He's really fucking good at writing dialogue. He should probably do it like more professionally um, because something he does really, really well, which he can write casual conversation. He can write mm -hmm. a conversation with a new character that isn't really about anything important. And it like, it just flows through like, there's maybe a joke in there and you're done. And like, you're like, that was a interaction between two regular ass people. And it doesn't come off cringe. It doesn't come off force. He can also write casual cursing which i feel like anyone that writes cursing in video games is like fuck shit damn Urgh. um yeah. and like that's not how people talk and the ability to write characters that talk human is like a huge fucking boon to any game because like i actually like i believe you because you still make a regular ass person and not some edgy ass anime character and then this game has some edgy ass anime bullshit because at the end of the day fucking you can tell that hey Ben Cedar really wishes he could have made a fucking Cowboy Bebop game, so. <laughs> the fucking main character Bebop is game. just Spike. I'm, I'm excited that. to play it. <laughs> it's really, it's I, really, um, really good. It, it, it looked really interesting when it was first shown off a while ago. And then I was worried because I played Donut County and I feel like Donut County was 
very overhyped. It's an interesting idea that is way too thin and short. And so I was. See, worried. I love how short it is. I love it because I, I, yeah. I bought it for $8 and I beat it in like three hours. To me, that's like a good movie ticket. Like that's that was a great yeah. experience to yeah. me. I think the like difference there is how you approach Donut County, which like to me, and I th- I don't know if this was you, Ian, but I approach Donut County as like a Katamari. Like, oh, I want something to play and like take me through it and stuff. When it should be approached like a Gone Home, where it's just like a yes. story to take it's, you through it. It's yes. yeah, it's a yes, very yes. it's a very very bite sized experience. And, and yeah. I don't mean to 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 crap on Donut County, but. But the point is, I was looking at this going, hey, this looks promising, but it's by the guy who did Donut County, which I feel like didn't really live up to its full like premise. And but seeing all the reviews come in, I'm like, OK, I feel like I really I really should should give this a shot. So I'm, I'm excited to play it. One thing on the premise of Donut County, it was the premise was a tweet made by a bot making fun of Peter Molyneux. So I think it did live to the premise. <laughs> it, no, but I, I just mean um, it felt like it did one thing and then it just yes. did that over like five levels. It yes. did not iterate on it anymore. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And like that, I think that's what Ben Studio kind of wants with his games. He wants like, here's my weird concept. Watch me stretch it as far as I can. And like, that's it. You get as far as yeah. it goes. Yeah, I just it just felt like Donut County didn't really stretch it was no, just like, no 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 here's a concept five levels i mean he like, made it on like eight dollars in a dream and you can see with neon white what happens when he has a budget yeah 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 and and i'm again i think part of my problem is not necessarily with the game itself it's with a lot of people saying like this game's incredible yeah. and then you play it and you're like mm. no no it's with no, how much it's, you it's good, but it's not the soundtrack though yeah because he killed your family he needs on him Man, the soundtrack to Donut County is on my chill no vocals playlist. I'll tell you that much. He's like he's like steal it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Cuz he's fucking awesome. Um, um yeah, Neon White's very good. Highly recommend it. What are you playing it on? PC. Okay. I'm trying to say I've, I've heard PC is is preferred because some of the shooting I'm not using I'm not, I'm not using keyboard and mouse. Although like I could totally see if I was really going to get like all of the artist stamps um I, uh, if you beat his time uh, in on a level, you get like a stamp that says you've done this level the best. Like you're awesome, cool. If I was going for all those, I'd definitely be using keyboard and mouse. But I'm just I'm taking I'm chill. I'm just walking through. It's great. Yeah, I'm getting all the plat. I'm getting all the aces and moving on. Aces high, they say, folks. Um, so that's all the games we have been playing this week. Unless y'all been playing other things that you didn't put on the list. Games um, hate them. Games hate them they hate them because they ain't them um which means it's time for the news which means it's time to play the fucking ridiculously long fucking piece of shit news theme <laughs> that makes fun of factorio um so i'm gonna oh, i, I should to play, play factorio. factorio you that's what you should play next is factorio god i still haven't beaten it uh here we go news theme here's the news it's gaming news we're talking about news what's up news but now there's more to the song so you can sing along and it won't bore you though unlike factorio False. kingdom hearts was played by ian and he really loved pirates of the caribbean but we don't False. want to have a vocal <laughs> spat that so let's good. bring it back to your local chat thank you chat thanks zach. um thank you zach that was great i'm so happy you were here um yeah it's weird because he's also like talking in our slack right now like that how many hands this guy got oh he's got or some talented feet many um (laughs) talented feet uh speaking of ian gibson uh miyazaki uh here uh says from some from ian gibson miyazaki (laughs) (laughs) for a second my brain was like wait what that's his full name what's going on i started reading this headline uh, for those at home, it says Miyazaki says from Software's next game. But I started reading it as Miyazaki says from Software's next game. <laughs> from the next software- game to come out on a so- on a piece of software is yeah. next game to Hi, come I'm out. Miyazaki <laughs> is <software>. the next <laughs> software is <laughs> Excel <Tell> two. <laughs> oh, Excel two, would, the sequel to kill. Excel. I would, I would kill for <laughs> Excel two. Fucking Eve online people scream. <laughs> 
I wish software had had subtitle like subheads. I'm not even kidding. You just blew my mind with Excel too, because I use it so much. Oh my god! The I want it to be like be so good. One we, like we Excel pause? two would, more yeah, cells. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, okay. Can we can we all pitch a title for a, a subtitle for Excel two? So it's Excel two colon and then something. <laughs> Extreme lookup, which is a reference to X lookup, which is a very popular formula. Oh, oh I got mine. Excel Go two sum of all data. Uh, XL two journey into final requiem ep episode do sky <laughs> three sixty five <laughs> over two. And, and the, the box the box art is is Excel and Titsy numbers peeking out of the corner like oh. it's great. <laughs> I just, Love want this it, one. I just want XL2 and then some long equation with a squiggle underneath it and it just doesn't <laughs> oh, work. Oh, that'd be actually, that'd be really good, actually. <laughs> Fuck. XL FX, that little FX formula symbol they have. Oh, God. Just use Google Sheets. Anyways. It's better. Um, <laughs> it's not, though. I don't even it know has better, it's some better is. things. But it's Nerd <laughs> fun! <laughs> oh. Here we go. Get the cardboard. Um, Miyazaki says next. <laughs> It's from software's next game is in the final stages of development uh i believe this was based off a rumor going around about um they had several games in progress during yeah, that um, was, no he stated that in 2018 yeah he said they it was three, that three, long ago off of yeah the, yeah Ugh. not rumor sorry off of Here, I'll, previous I'll, I'll statements is what i mean I've, I've got the quote up. This is from Video Games Chronicle. Quote, in the previous 2018 interview, Miyazaki had stated that since 2016, the game, the studio had been working on three and a half games, the half game being PS4 VR title, Derecene. So they, they've they uh, been working on something for a while now. So what yeah. is Elden Ring? Or was? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming Elden Ring DLC has... of some sort. Oh, but no, wait, but sorry. They wouldn't call, they wouldn't call, in, they wouldn't call it in the game, though. The next line is, quote, from Miyazaki, there are 3.5 lines that have been in the work since that time. Miyazaki said, 0 0.5 is Derecene, the VR title. 1.0 is Sekiro, and the remaining two are unannounced titles. So one would have been Elden Ring. The armored other one we don't know. Yeah. But I, I saw people thinking it's probably just another Armored Core. Um, yeah. Which I mean, he's been talking about going back to that franchise since Dark Souls that could 1. Be cool. Do you guys have any familiarity with the Armored Core series? I, I like fucking zero. love Armored Core. What? What, what is? Why it? do like, you what love it? What style of game is it? I know it's Mecha. What style of game is it? Mecha, yeah. dash around and shoot stuff. Like it's just uh, the and city? also use oh. big plasma sword. Um, is it like third person, like over? Yeah. Third person and... over shoulder. You are. It varies from game to game, but you are you are a pilot of some variety. Usually, some sort of bounty hunter slash mercenary. You take on jobs for big evil corporations or sometimes regular people, um, and like do stuff in this big, not like post apocalyptic, but like everything is shitty Earth, where like the ultra rich nice. live in floating cities above the terrible, terrible Today. like down. Where everything is like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Where everything's like all dry and shitty. Um, and they range. I I've played two, three, four, four A, and five. Um, four and four A are the ones that like everyone fucking and three. Everyone jerks the fuck off about because they're fucking incredible. Uh, four answer is, it's fucking it's real good. Ian Gibson, you would fucking love that game. Yeah, because I, somebody is, with a recent a recent mecha obsession. As long as it's not you know like stupid difficulty. No, 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 it's I'm fun. Okay. It's it, it's like it's fun. Pick up like pick up, do a couple missions, put down, uh, nice. customize the fuck out of your mech. There is a button yeah. in the mech garage that is just get really really close tight up shots of the individual parts of your mech. Yeah. I assume so perverts can masturbate. I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna look at this. Um, I just have one Me, question. Somebody, watch, somebody. Wa watch the Armored Core 4 answer intro FMV thing. Okay. You'll, you'll okay. come. Because, look, I have a Should confession to make, together? which is... Sure, we can do that for this. It's like three minutes when long. You, when you called me out about five minutes ago, when you said I looked confused, I was not confused. I was actually looking at pictures <laughs> of Gunpla on Twitter because somebody did a paint job, Jesus so it looks Christ. like a Jack Daniels whiskey bottle, which is very funny. But anyways, Mine, I'm going to look at pictures of these. Um, sorry, I just have one question, but it's also a joke, so I should get everyone ready for it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm ready if for you you're the Mecca, what direction do you pray in? <laughs> God damn it, that's good. 
That's pretty good. That's pretty good, right? I can't think of a good enough joke. It's just funny. I didn't want to laugh, but that was good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yo, these games, these specs look good. Anyways, folks, yeah. that's the show. Um, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <clears throat> Chris, honest question, though. Should I play Armored Core 4, or should I wait for the new Armored Core, assuming that's you should play. Is? You should just play 4 Answer and wait yeah, for the don't, new to come out. It, Ian, okay. you keep making excuses for yourself to it, not Ian, live your I, life. I should clarify, 4 that. and 4A are completely separate games. 4A is a full sequel to 4, but so, you don't have to play 4 to play 4A. I'm giving you one. I'm giving play you one a. game. Play 4A. It's the best game. So, okay. okay. So you're taking a 4A into 4A. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're taking a 4A into... Hey, that's a stream series right there, folks. Oh, man. That's pretty good. Copyright TM. TM. Um, trademark. Uh, but uh, it does do one of my favorite things, by the way, which is uh, the main character of 4 is a person you can fight in 4A. That's always fucking cool as shit when oh, games do yeah. that. Especially when it's like... I like when games do that, but it's it's actually you with like all your power ups and everything yeah yeah oh no he's tough he's tough as a motherfucker tough Um, as a motherfucker and this is uh i don't i don't think it is i it doesn't look like 4a is backwards compatible on the xbox which kind of sucks that sucks um real quick we do do we all think it's armored core this miyazaki game i mean probably like probably right that makes sense because they've been talking about it and everybody wants it like what like a decade right yeah. What, when like was that. when was Armored Core five? Um, that uh, is four A was two thousand eight. Armored Core five was twenty twelve. Yeah, it's been a full ass decade since an Armored Core game, and like Miyazaki has said, he likes them more than the Souls game. Oh, it's four answer, not it's four, four answer. answer. It's no, it's full. Oh. Four oh no, 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 it's F O R answer. Yeah, I know. I saw no. Elise put that in the chat. That's wild. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is, <laughs> but it is so Armored Core Four A. That's yeah. smart. Uh, I like that. Oof. And 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 does, hey hey guys, real quick question: Does the does the name for answer ever make sense in the plot of the game? Yes. No, of not. fucking course not. Yes, he was. Uh, he was all along. He was the answer. Uh, for pray for him. Um, I'm gonna move on Jesus while Christ, Ian, your Becca savior. Finds more porn uh, to watch. Um, it's called Gunpla, Will. I'm confused. Uh, one Ian Gibson repeatedly has said never to bring up Cyberpunk 2077 on this very stream, yet he posts a story. Yet, because he, this one doth thou is, protest too much? If this, this is story is true, it's like the biggest thing ever. I, well, I think unfortunately it's it's not because if it's unfortunately thou art common. A rose, thy right. smells as sweet as Satan. Okay, look, let me. The story is there is a YouTuber who uh, had uh, basically some gossip, rumor mill sourcing, etc., that told them that <laughs> one of the major reasons why Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven had such a poor launch is because the QA company that they outsourced a portion of their QA to was lying to them and Big deliberately, Bang Boys QA deliberately <laughs> under reporting major issues with the project that they uh, exaggerated the size of the team that they had testing Cyberpunk 2077 and that uh, they lied about the experience saying these were senior testers when they weren't. Most of them only had less than six months experience in QA. Um, and, and I think there is one piece here that people keep pointing to, which is if you remember if you remember after Cyberpunk came out, I, it was it's either the president or the CEO of CD Projekt Red. If you remember that, he had that hostage video where he came out and he's like, we didn't know the game was this bad. And everybody was laughing at him at this time being like, how could you not know that? But like, if they were working with QA contractors and QA kept coming back with just minor bugs and you believe that report, that press conference makes a lot more sense that kind of like deer in the headlights look that he had i, I don't know did yeah. you guys get a chance to, to to look into this yeah i mean my, my basic thing is like if 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 like they can undeniably prove that basically what they were given was false information and led to believe the game was in a much better state than it is they have like this is a case like they they should sue the amount of yeah. money they fucking lost here oh, yeah. like like 
and like and like not even not only just like their money but like the, the name of CD Projekt was dragged through the fucking mud and still is like like yeah. people aren't over the fact of how poorly this game ran and performed and shit like that like 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 I think there's a totally like a case you made of like this company fucked them over really hard and like not just how like the regular fucking over of like oh yeah they hit stuff underneath the rug but like this is like catastrophic level so so like their I, stock I tanked. I want to push back on this a little bit, which is that, you know, just just to say my background is I think I'm at almost eight years in software QA. My first year was in gaming QA. Last seven years have been a non non gaming QA. I worked my way all the way up to senior QA tester. I've been a QA manager now for six months. Um, part of this is Quantic Labs, the QA, the, the QA company. You're right. But part of this is CD Projekt Red. They did everything fucking wrong with this. Yes. Like, if you treat QA like it is something separate, like literally there is a bad term in the, in the QA industry called tossing it over the fence or over the fence. The idea mm -hmm. being devs get together and they say, I completed it. Now let me throw it over the fence and just let QA fucking deal with it. That's awful. Your QA testers should be in your fucking scrums. They should be there. They should be able to reach out to your devs if they have an issue, if they have a question. They should be talking to product or business analysts, whatever the fuck you want to call them, to ask about requirements. But if you treat your QA like something on the other side of a fence <laughs> where you finish your work and then you filter it down through management all the way down to that QA, they're not going to understand what they're testing. They're going to feel like they can't question things because they're siloed off from the rest of the company and locked in a fucking basement where their key cards don't work on the dev floors. And the only time they see the devs is when they run across them in a fucking cafeteria and they can't, they're not allowed to talk to devs. Any question you have to development has to go up through fucking QA management and then over. That's a God awful way of running it. So if Tom. you as an executive at CD project red decide to treat QA like shit, your QA is going to be shit. If you're going to allow them to do things like have bug quotas, where it's not about, hey, we need to have metrics. We need to make sure that these things are tested fully. We need to have regression testing. It's just, no, you need to find 20 bugs a day minimum. Then you know what they're going to find? They're going to find shit bugs. As part of my job before, you know what I did as a QA tester? It was going through bugs that were entered by an outside QA team and going through them and saying, this is shit close it. This is shit. Close it. This is a real bug. This is not a real bug. Close it because they're trying to fill a fucking quota and not actually test the product yeah. because the QA management is shit. So I but agree it with sounds you. Like also that like, like the fact is like, I don't think necessarily, uh, Cedar Park was, un was understanding how much like wasn't being shown to them. Like, I don't like, obviously they, they were lied to about the number of staff working on it, lied about the experience of staff yes. working on it. And I, I don't, it doesn't say here if they knew that the, the quota thing existed. However, to your credit, also hire a better company. Yeah, exactly. You're I, only I working work, on the biggest game ever. I, I work with multiple contractors at multiple different companies and I, I onboard contractors on a day-to-day -day basis. They are in the scrum teams. They are with us. We don't care if you're from Ukraine, you're from India, you're from Korea. We don't give a fuck where you are. You're on the team. You're on the team. We're not going to treat you like some siloed property. And so and so just my, my pushback is basically those decisions to outsource QA and not have them in constant communication with devs, et cetera, and have them part of the process and allow them to do quotas, et cetera. That's on CD Projekt Red. So, yeah. so you totally have a point that this QA, this QA company may have lied and misled. But CD Projekt Red still took the risk of going with this company and allowing to operate them in that fashion instead of saying, hey, you have QA testers? Great. Bring them into the fold. Yeah. Let's have them part of the dev team. That's um, how it needs to go. There is an update to the story at the bottom. I don't know if you guys saw this. But I, yeah. I, we got to take it with another grain of salt because it is an update from another third-party person who has sources at CDPR. Um, basically saying they spoke to several CD Projekt Red people who refuted the claim about uh, Quantic Lab. Uh, one developer said, we knew about the bugs that people were complaining about. This was not something that was, quote, unknown to us, but we did not have time to focus on it. We were crunching like crazy, so we were paper thin at the end. Um, yeah, I, I think it really comes down to, like, they're both at wrong. Like, both parties are wrong here. But CD Projekt Red will win the lawsuit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just like I, I just want to be I, I get up in arms about this because QA 
QA has quality in the title. So a lot of times when the product quality ends up tanking in production environment, QA takes the hit and everybody in the company wants to point to QA and say, why didn't you find this? And sure, QA is not perfect, but there are also plenty of times where devs miss code freeze and they're checking something in two minutes, two days before it's supposed to go to production. And they say, hey, you need to test this right away. And you don't have time to ask questions. You don't have time to test it properly. There's pressure on you. There's executives asking for an update every 15 minutes going, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? And you're going, oh shit, we got to make change control process 24 hours before. So that means I've got about two hours to test this. And you're just like, go, 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 go. <laughs> That's not the fault of QA. If you have a bad process, it puts pressure on QA and QA will make mistakes. And if your process doesn't doesn't set up things for QA to succeed, like giving them time, having them part of the dev process, clear lines of communication, clear requirements, documentation, et cetera, they are going to fail. And again, QA is not perfect, but just because something is bad quality doesn't mean you need to blame QA. And that's that's kind of what I'm getting out of this story is they did QA dirty. And, and part of it was an external company, but part of it is also just cyberpunk just scoffing at QA and not setting them up to succeed. Totally agree. I'm emotional. <laughs> He's emotional, folks. Uh, next up on here, uh, according to one Jeff Grubb, now uh, working at the same company as me, uh, Metroid Prime is Games... Is he really? Yeah, he's a giant bomb now. Oh, okay. So, right. my I thought sister's a, site, as we put I it. I thought he was at GameSpot. I was like, can we get Jeff Grubb here? Can we, can we kiss <laughs> Jeff Grubb tonight? We no, could. but I could message him on Slack if you'd like me to. <laughs> <laughs> Do it! Send him a dick pic! <laughs> And say, where's God of War Ragnarok? <laughs> you asshole! <laughs> um, Metroid oh. Prime games are coming to... Oh, sorry. Metroid... Pr oh, no. I did read that right. Metroid Prime games are coming to Nintendo Switch. That made me think Amazon Prime games. Um, he said <laughs> this year, uh, it seemed that Metroid Prime 1 would be remastered for this holiday season. And 2 and 3 would be uh, later on. He didn't really have a time frame for that. Um, I have never played Metroid Prime. I have never played Metroid oh, Prime they're incredible. 2 or 3. I have certainly not played Metroid Prime 4. Um, no I've never has. beaten no a Metroid will. game. Uh, I have never seen uh, Samus ever. Uh, that's not true. No, I, I know. It's not true. You and I have looked at playing Rule 34 together oh. all the time. Um, Jeez. I tend to believe Jeff Grubb on most things. Um, I don't believe Jeff Grubb. Um, you want me to message just, him? Yeah, tell him. Tell him Chris is Chris. Sorry, Chris, Chris doesn't believe you. Should we? Um, should we? Uh, so I, I'm. I real quick. I'm gonna look into this news story because we've been bitten three times now, where Jeff Grubb says something like, "Hey, I think this is probably what's going to happen." And then some news site picks it up and runs with it and says, Jeff Grubb says this is what's going to happen. They act as if it's a rumor that he is reporting on as opposed to his informed opinion. That's fair. Um, and I, I, I'm going <coughs> to double check. We may be getting screwed again. Let's see what this is. Here we go, folks. Live fact checking occurring it's just right now. It's it's um, just... It's just a Wario 64 tweet saying yes. Jeff Grubb. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So I went, I I went to an actual article afterwards. Um, oh, I, however, however I to, clip. to give Ian credit, uh, there is, a, there is a, a tweet replying to Jeff Grubb here um, of some clip from something called Rebs Gaming. And their headline is, Jeff Grubb has leaked Metroid Prime Remaster. He says it's happening and coming this holiday season in November. God, I hate that so much. Okay, so Fuck I have a off. picture quote here. He says, in reference to Metroid Prime, now, quote, now I've been told that their plans are to release that game this holiday. I almost, I think almost certainly to line up with the 20th anniversary in November. Wait, what the fuck is he, game is he talking about? Prime, Prime 1. I guess, I guess it's, uh, Prime 1's 20 years old? Yeah, we're yeah, old, right. Ian. Old. 2001, yeah, 2002. GameCube, GameCube 2001, that Jesus. lines up, doesn't it? Jesus. I think it does. 2002. You're right, wow. So, uh, yeah, so that so this is Grubb actually reporting on information that he's received as opposed to his opinion. On, I, I know that sounds like I'm, I'm being being aggressive well, here. And We've been screwed twice. We've been screwed twice. Yeah. It's not because I don't believe Grubb or I don't believe Grubb's rumor mill, because I think I think typically even when it's a rumor that he's no, hearing. Yeah. Like, I believe the words out of his true. mouth. Yeah. Um, I just don't think fucking Nintendo gives a rat's fucking dick about a Metroid. Otherwise, we would have heard... Yeah, but we've we 
When was Prime 4 announced, Ian? It's like eight they fucking years ago. <laughs> they announced it. So I and think they, they care about it. it. Does, that, that doesn't mean they're going to actually do it well and, Where's and release F-Zero? a Prime remaster, etc. But <laughs> that's the Star thing. They, they, don't, they don't talk about F-Zero. They talk you, about do, Metroid. Do you, know, do you know the F-Zero Easter egg at, uh, at uh, the Japan uh, Mario Kart thing? <laughs> No, it's like no. there's a crumpled F Zero poster in a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> it's so like wh- whatever set designer did that, fucking amazing. I'm sure he got in trouble yeah. for it, but that's hilarious. That's very Jesus. good. Um, yeah, Jeff Grubb on his shit uh, as always. Uh, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see a Metro Prime Four, aka when I'm dead. When he's dead, folks, we gotta kill him. Um, next up, Hideo Kojima wanted to develop a video game like The Boys, but The Boys came out and he decided not to do it. Um, I believe he did I, say, uh, The yeah, Boys... Because like, so, Kojima's never ripped off an established franchise know, That's ever. first. That's the thing, Mr. Snake Plissken. <laughs> Secondly, um, I just love his tweet here, which, granted, is translated, but it's so like, <laughs> The Boys, which I quit after three episodes of season one, I thought I'd watch the rest of the show. Actually, I watched a few episodes that were delivered at the time when I was about to start a project that I'd been warming up for a long time. It was put on hold because the concept was similar different settings and tricks a buddy male slash female thing with a special detective squad facing off against legendary heroes behind the scenes i was thinking of mads as the lead of course you were every every waking minute of hideo kojima's life he's thinking of mads mickelson as the titular character in That's what whatever he's currently watching i still like like the thing i knew this was in death stranding but it still blows my mind that he got so many like like a-list actors and and directors to just play long extended parts in death stranding as basically themselves. It's no, bonkers. it's because it's because he's actually fucking because he he's understands how Hollywood yeah. works. He's friends with people, and and the thing is about Kojima is he'll fucking ask. Yeah, did like, and I think Del, Tor- Del Toro. Apparently, a lot of it was he's really good friends with Del Toro. So like before he called Norman Reedus, Del Toro called Norman Reedus and said, "Hey, my friend Kojima's going to call you. Whatever he asks, just say yes." So it's like Del Toro is helping him make all these connections. Yeah, I know Del crazy. Toro. He isn't in Death Stranding, but is his, is anyone else's, did everyone else do their voice in Death Stranding? What? Sorry, Del Toro's voice isn't in Death Stranding, is what I mean. Oh, that's he didn't not, do that's any not of his voice? No, he didn't do voice? any of his lines. Oh, but that's crazy. is everyone else? Huh. Uh, yes and no, because like Edgar Wright is in the game as one of the, one of the terminal yeah. people, but it's No, I just voice. mean like the titular people, like obviously Mads does his voice, Norman does his Norman voice. Norman is his. I Norman, think uh, Nicholas does nicholas finding reference i don't know it doesn't really sound like his voice but i'm not sure i i don't I know see, i'm not voice, as familiar a director <laughs> and uh, granted you guys are right i only know that del toro thing because like i read it i didn't i actually i didn't know i thought that was just oh, a fucking yeah voice. it sounds exactly like I thought it was good <laughs> i watched the shower scene the other day and i was like oh, this yeah. is so it's so stupid but it works because he knows it's stupid and he's leaning into it and making he has it creepy no weird fucking fear he'll put it in his fucking it's, game Fuck and geez. he makes it work and yeah. he makes it work well, it's bonkers also i love so much that i love that baby lou i love him he's so perfect bb yeah he's perfect more of a bba guy baby. Wow. Wow. With a fucking thumb. Ugh, I bet you God. like Last Jedi, too. <laughs> uh, well, better than favorite. Rise of Skywalker. It's, no, that's it's true. not my favorite. That's true. Trilogy. That's true. It, it has, my favorite, it has my favorite. Mo- it has the yeah. only moment I like in the entirety of the new trilogy when they shoot the ship into the ship. Yeah, that's yes. awesome. That is a great moment. And if you don't like that, oh, fuck, fuck you. And a I greater think, moment you know is when what? Leia flies back into the other ship. <laughs> oh, they should have just killed her right then and there. She was already dead. Uh, yeah. No, I think you're right. That probably is the best moment in the entire trilogy, which is yeah, honestly no, kind of sad. Uh, well, the whole salt planet sequence is actually pretty good too, but it's yeah, marred the by bombs. the fact. Yeah. It's marred yeah. by the fact that Leia's there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck. I, I, Chris, I still use that uh, Rise of Skywalker tin popcorn bucket as my trash can. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. I had a lovely day. 
It was true. Well, free tickets, first of all. Second yeah, of all, opening night too. the crowd, was, yeah, opening night, crowd was very receptive, which was great because we all booed when they kissed. <laughs> and it, like, like Will and I were oh, in, in, in a, a room of people that went in all relatively interested or excited. And then yeah. over the course of a two and a half hour film, every single person in that theater slowly turned against the movie. <laughs> it great. was because like you went not to tangent here, but last Jedi did some stuff, whether you liked it or not, it did some stuff. And I was genuinely interested in seeing how they would fix those things instead of just ignoring them and changing what happened. And then the thing saying is, her name worse. wrong at the end everyone, of the movie. Everyone, oh God, <laughs> everyone bitched and moaned that force awakens was too safe, which it was. Uh, so last totally. Jedi took some, Took some risks, a lot, some of which were not, were very bad. Like a fight sequence like, that makes no sense. <laughs> like, or Casino Planet. Um, yeah. um, but at least it tried some shit. And then Rise of Skywalker was like, what if we didn't try anything? What if, what if we what if we didn't play it safe and we didn't try I anything? Feel like, I feel like I feel like J.J. Abrams for three hours. J.J. Abrams, like if you if you read into some of his stuff where he's always like, oh, it's all about the mystery box. And it's like it, it, the answers don't have to make sense. It's all about the suspense and the mystery. And he at first you're like, go. you're like, yeah, that makes sense. And then you realize, no, wait, you're just insulting the viewers and saying the viewers don't. It doesn't need to make sense. They're idiots. They just want to see Abrams, fancy stuff. Boom. J.J. Abrams is a Fuck serial off. edger. Yeah, he's 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 a bad person. He's a bad person. every woman he's been with. He's like, no, just ride it. We don't have to finish. Uh, so just just to close this out. <laughs> are you close? Buddy? Christ. He goes, are you close? Oh, yes. And just kicks her out of his leaves, house. He leaves. <laughs> Gets in his fucking sports car. He bought with his Star Trek money. <laughs> um, so just just to put a pin on this, I I went and saw it with friend of the site Jimmy Jones. And he had already Classic. seen it and he hated it. And so the whole time during the movie, he would, ju- he would just turn and look at me with glee whenever something bad was about to happen. Like the scene where Ray basically kills Chewbacca. He like turned to me and I was like, what did they just let that happen? And then he comes back to life and you're like, what the fuck? And Jimmy's cackling and because he knows it's coming and he can just see me like just confusion on my face. My my most vivid great. memory of that entire fucking film is the reveal that the Palpatine yes. clone is Ray's dad is Will oh, Crosby man. leaning forward, looking over at me and just going <laughs> like this. <laughs> That was going to be my memory to share. I, oh, that's the only thing I remember about that It's movie. a perfect encapsulation of that the experience of that movie. It was just, nah. Oh. nah. I, I no. don't, Mr. Abrams, nah. <laughs> Somehow I don't Palpatine has returned. <laughs> it was announced in Fortnite. Come on. Yeah, yeah. fuck. Um, real thing that anyways, folks, we should get back to the news here. Shit. Zach's been waiting. Um, there was a Nintendo partner, Direct Mini, um, Mega Man Battle Network's coming. You can play them all. I, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna play those. They this look pretty good. Fuck, Ian. I'm gonna play I'm one excited. of them. I actually, might be, it might be my favorite series of games. <laughs> I love I'm every gonna, game in that fucking franchise. I'm excited. You, you'll have to tell me. You don't have to answer now. But if I were to play just one, because I don't want to commit to the full series, even if I love them, I don't think I would play the full series. So you've just got to give me. The one that I, I believe, should play. I believe three is the one that's like they perfected the formula. Okay. Right, they so they they they, they water down a little bit later because they do like the Pokemon thing where there's two versions. Oh. Yeah. There's a mega version and a man version. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And like and like but like only Pokemon <laughs> there's like legit differences in the two, so like fuck. I just well, want to play the man, man version of Mega Man. I want to trade. I want to trade. <laughs> there's, there's a Mega Dude, Man and a Rock Man version. Busty women. <laughs> And just like man jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, everybody it's like the man show, off. but it's Mega Man. <laughs> because, the, because the thing is jacking in. This is perfect. <laughs> Instead of an arm, he gave him a giant dick. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Anyways, there weren't too many crazy announcements. There was a Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection. First time um, they showed off a little bit. Switch a million years too late. Yeah, a little bit of Sparks of Hope. Um, yeah. Rail Grade, which I thought looked awesome, which was previously announced, cool. looks like a Factorio is train. That, uh, is that game. on PC? It's coming yeah, to Epic Games. Switch. Uh, okay. But it was an, also announced for Switch. Um, uh, Return to Monkey Island. 
Return to Rosie Monkey Bear. Island, uh, which I'm excited for. Um, I, I really want to play the old Monkey Islands. I've never touched them. Um, I, I don't. I'm not crazy about the new art style. I almost wish they'd done like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredders. Like like Shredders Revenge did a really cool thing where they were just like same exact art style. We're just doing it at 1080p. Um, and I I kind of wish they'd done that. But I, I I whatever. I'm probably not gonna play it anyways. Um, Live a Live demo out. I need to try that. That live comes out on July 22nd. Isn't that what it is? Live a live. L live alive. No, it's live a live. Oh. Oh, no, I oh. never would have. I'm sorry. Yeah, words they, that are pronounced yeah, different ways. But they, but they did say it in the trailer, motherfucker. I didn't watch it. Then get off yeah, my ass. Don't you do this for a living? Sir, Hermione. Um, um, I, you know what? Will, what, about the, what about the shitty Sonic Frontiers trailer? God. They had, Sonic... Was it new gameplay? I'm excited for Sonic Frontiers. I know it's it probably going to be it just bad. Looked like, it just looked worse because it was on Switch. Oh, oh okay. okay. Dragon Quest Treasures with Eric from Dragon Quest XI. Actually, mm -hmm. very excited that. about that. Probably what, play is that, that game? One. what is that game? Uh, what is this, what's the genre? It's I don't know how to describe the genre. Yeah, you get like monster companions and they fight with you. And oh, it's, it's Pokemon, and you get treasure. No, but it's not turn based. Okay, so it's it's yeah, not it's like Pokemon. it's like, like in your party, you just run around, and you hack and slash and shit, and then you pick it's up like that stranding, and then you sell those treasures. <laughs> like that stranding. The treasures are the memories. Are the friends we made okay. along the way? The treasures are the babies, and then that you sell cool. the babies for money. No, you eat the. You babies. know what was not? You know what was not in this direct that I, I I am desperate for news on. Actually, it's not less news. I just want the release date. Sports Door story. story. It was it was originally a 2021 game, wasn't it? And it just yeah. keeps getting pushed. I'm not upset. I just I I'm I'm waiting for it. I feel like it's <laughs> so, my silk song. For I'm every like, for every Slack thing when they announce a direct, everyone says. It used to be Silk Song, Silk Song, Silk Song. And me and uh, I forget what he is. He does all the deals and stuff. I think Stephen Petit. Um, say Sports Story every time. Wait, yeah. I don't and think I'm I ever saw this trailer. Still waiting this looks for it. awesome. Golf, Chris, it's, have you played it, Golf Story? Golf Story is the greatest golf video game ever. It's it's yeah, phenomenal. It's very the same good. thing, but but more sports. You should play Golf Story. If you I have should play Golf Story. Golf, I, I'm going to tell you about Golf Story. 100%. This is... This is not a spoiler anyway. Golf Story has a murder mystery section in the middle of it. Yeah, it's great. Like, I've never finished it's, it's, it, and that's how much I love that game. I still love it, and I've never beaten it. It's um, it's it's really I cool. Go back and beat it. Oh, I should play this game. I should stream this game. Yeah, you should. It's great. It's, it's good. Probably, it's good. probably eight to ten hours total. It's not too long either. That's way longer than I thought. I think you're going to two. Yeah, I've... It's worth it, though. Hey, remember how I said Donut County doesn't expand on the on the premise? Golf Story is like, let's fucking stretch this thing to the moon and back. Yeah. Like, it's like, I mean, this is not a golf game. We're doing and crazy also, stuff with hey, it. I the play, golf I play, mechanics I play, I play what are really golf. good. Um, I wouldn't say... Well, it's I don't different. know. What's crazier? What the... What the, what's crazier? What what's the, the golf, golf or golf crazy. story? Because what, what the what golf, the golf like goofier. plays up everything. Yeah, I would say goofier. I would say goofier. But golf story has like more depth in it, like story mechanics. Friend of the cetera. site, what the golf developer? Tim was his That's name, right. I believe. Yeah, I think it was Tim. We played it before everyone else in the world. You also played um, Skateboard. How'd that go? Fuck off. <laughs> oh, we didn't play Skateboard. <laughs> yeah, I didn't touch it. That was all Jake. It's Jake's fault. Who? <laughs> I don't know. Someone who works here. Um, works. Uh, but I don't. Uh, universities. Oh yeah, I'm fucking skipping spell break. Spell break. Anyways, whatever. It's well, Scotland. Blizzard, Blizzard. Blizzard killed another studio. Yeah. Blizzard killed I mean, another the, studio. But but here's the thing. The game looked cool, but like they weren't doing anything with it. So whatever. I think Blizzard saved them because I think they were gonna just shut down if they weren't taken by someone else. Possibly, but at the same it's time, a cool concept and a cool game. Yeah, yeah. It was a cool game. I. I I'm more upset that they took a studio that was doing something interesting and instead of bringing them in house and letting them do their own thing, they're basically just saying, no, 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 you're working on wow. Now that's it. We're taking away all your creativity, et cetera. You're working on wow. now. Yeah, Maybe it's like a riot games thing. And eventually they'll get to make their game again. Let's hope so. Riot um, games acquired radiant. The guys who made rising thunder and said, I, I, Hey, can you, Hey, can you clean yeah. up our code? Cause it's terrible. They literally put them just... on code clean up for two and a half years. And they're like, okay, now you can go make the fighting Damn. game. We required you for Damn. Um, no, sorry. The real news here, folks. Skull and Bones. Yeah! The hit television video game sensation the announced in 2005 BC by 
Eve. Wait, shut the fuck up. Was this actually 2005? Okay, no, it wasn't. I was in BC, Chris. That's before you. Um. Anyways, for computers. For Chris. Fucking idiot. For computers. Gotta get those computers. Computer. I'm a computer. Oh man, I've been watching through X Men animated, and it just makes me want to watch the GI Joe PSAs. Anyways, uh, Skull and Bones uh, is supposedly going to come out in November. Uh, according to Tom Henderson, uh, who gave a little check mark here. 2017 E3 was when it was announced. Damn, it that... began development in 2013, though. Yeah, with oh. Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Bones. Black Flag. Um, I'll say that yes. one carefully. People, uh, as an he, MMO spinoff. He, people yeah. finally got to play this game. They didn't say it was very good. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. There was a, a rating for it that... Oh, I want to see if I can find that. The Skull and Bones rating. But is the TV exci- show still happening? That's all I care about. Oh, Bones! Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Commit to the bit, I, you fucking asshole! I typed Skull and Boins! Ooh! <laughs> skull, skull and Boys! Hello, sailor! I am excited for this because th- there is definitely a gap in uh, multiplayer naval games. Like, there is Sea of Thieves, which is a bit too arcadey. And then there is, uh, like, War Thunder and World of Warships, which is a <laughs> bit too realistic and most importantly way too free to play microtransaction drown you to death yeah. with multiple currencies and so for, uh, for, did you play dreadnought i want to play the I new did, dreadnought but it was it was it was it's it, it's spaceships and not boats but it's oh, like there's MOBA. there's a it's boat a there's admiral dreadnoughts which is a new game oh i'm thinking of the one that's it's like it's like you're it's 5v5 and you're all in like spaceships but you're like it's you don't go up and down um yeah that's dreadnought yeah yeah, oh, yeah. i'm uh, sorry so, i'm speaking of a different game but i think i think there is room for a triple a title to come in and say look we're not free to play riddled with michael trans micro michael transactions but we're know. also not we're also not like super arcadey so you can come in and just have some fun and i think some sort of progression which sea of thieves again just has zero fucking progression how have they not solved that problem yet hey it's me so, michael transaction just stop it by oh just want to see oh, what I'm you're michael. up to you know hey, I, i'm going I, a little I over paid, the sun oh. i paid my bill i don't have any money on me I'm are sorry, you all great. are you in fact all oh. shook up tonight sir i'm, I'm all shook up <laughs> uh, oh, that's just, actually pretty fucking good what the fuck i'm all shook up <laughs> Oh, uh, mama. Oh, uh, mama. Uh, and, uh, sorry, Michael just barges in like that sometimes. Oh, God, I hate uh, that guy. Every time he takes money from me, every time. Yeah, he needs yeah, to finish. So, so there, is a, there is definitely a slot for this game in 2022 gaming. They just need to fill yeah, it. It doesn't even have to be a good coming it's out, Ian. Solid seven. That's all I need. Solid seven. Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Chris. Yeah, I was say, it's, it's competing with what? Neon White and fucking Xenoblade Chronicles 3? War. I'll believe when I see it. Uh, yeah, send your dick pics and we'll believe it when you see it. Um, <laughs> yeah, can I, read you Jeff. The, can I read you the skull and bone? Man, I almost screenshotted a fan interaction talking about God of War Ragnarok. Rag, Ragnarok. Rag, <laughs> Ragnarok. <laughs> and rag, rags to Cox. Um, and send it to the Discord, but I didn't. But it infuriated me so much. Uh, the broiness of some of these people who think screaming at people that of content they like will get them the answers they want anyways it's just wild anyway skull of bones rated m this is a naval combat action game in which players assume the role of a shipwrecked outcast on a journey to become a pirate captain as players take on missions they can explore settlements and engage in dramatic sea battles from a first person perspective players command their crew to shoot cannons at rivals example warships merchant ships settlements slash forts and attempts to obtain loot slash goods enemy ships can be rammed and boarded resulting in brief cutscenes of crew members shooting and slashing at each other combat is highlighted by gunfire cannon fire explosions and blood splatter effects some territory territories depict depict corpses impaled on spikes or hanging from nooses beaches may depict corpses and large bloodstains in the aftermath of battle settlements occasionally contain brothels and prostitutes that call out to the player when approached example come spend your coin all over me the price of my arse goes up today so buy a piece today oh so it goes up tomorrow so buy a piece today Players can also engage in quests and bring poppies to opium dens, which Ooh. are depicted with patrons lying on couches smoking pipes. The words fuck and shite appear in the dialogue. 
I just like <laughs> the price of my arse goes up tomorrow. So buy I a love piece that it today. took the time to include that and talk about opium. <laughs> Thank you, ESRB, doing oh, America's God bless job. You. Um, um I, I'm ready to play this game. I'm ready to play. It. I'm gonna give it I, a shot. Yeah. I would love if Ubisoft said fuck you. We're making a very accurate to the arrow piracy game, and it's racist as shit. <laughs> Honestly, Chris, as someone who's been reading Could the Aubrey Matron novels, which take place during the Napoleonic Wars, uh, Master and Commander, uh, not as racist as I would have expected because they're not being like they're being racist in the sense of like what they were taught and what they think is true, uh, but also very racist in other parts of like talking about this. It's just like, whoa. Um, yeah, wild. So I would love to see that as well because it would be so crazy. I just, the idea of a triple A studio being like, yeah, fuck yeah. it. Fuck you. I also, just, you can rape and pillage in this game. Fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. I, can't, I can't remember if this is that. So, so it was Ubisoft Singapore. That was kind of the, uh, the key devs behind this title. They're the one been driving it all these years. And there is actually a, a story of a pirate queen. It was basically a woman who commanded she a pirate three, army of like 300 ships. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an insane size pirate army. So there's actually Make a good that story game. they could tell. I thought you were going to say, I think, I think is this, no, this it takes place in the that. Caribbean motherfucker. This one does? Yeah, bitch. I thought you were going to say at the Singapore office they have an open. No, this den. is Indian Ocean. Oh. I I could have sworn we Where's knew this that? was in the Caribbean. This is off of uh, Wikipedia. According to a Kotaku report, initially it was in the Caribbean. Then it moved to the fantastical Hyperborea. Then finally the Indian Ocean. Hyperborea. Sorry. Sorry. Wait, what was that middle one? <laughs> It's so they could be oh, racist against they, aliens. Yeah, no, they they were doing they were doing like a new world where like we're like we're gonna oh. we're gonna we're gonna catch flack for this, so let's move it to a fantasy location. And then I assume someone at Ubisoft said, "No, oh, fuck that shit." Yeah, no, the Hyperborea is a, is a Greek mythology place, but also New so World they, they, was they a genocide. Monsters. <laughs> versus yes, like yes. i feel like pirates no, were like no, no. casual brotherhood <laughs> racism no, they were they were right to change new world let's get yes. that fucking straight um but pirates yeah you, you know, no one cares. Hey, pirates, aren't, cool. pirates aren't uh, aren't like like jolly protagonists they're murderers yeah. they're allowed to be racist right yeah <laughs> yeah up front people know that as opposed to explorers. Uh, look, look, I'm just fine with Ubisoft it. making a racist game. I'm not gonna fucking play it. <laughs> there's a there's a 99 chance that somehow you are good pirates in this game. Oh, 99.9 percent .9 chance, my man. Right, yeah. but I still think there'll be flaw. Like I think we've come. Like even Black Flag, you weren't perfect. Um, I'm just saying the Kingdom Come Deliverance guys. They're not afraid to be racist, so <laughs> yeah. they should make a pirate game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They should make a game about oh, South Carolina in 1820. Oh, God. Okay, um, no, that's too far. I don't <laughs> care about Sega. I'm hitting the outro button. 12 years of slave, the video game. Out of no! Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Ian Gibson! That's basically what you're asking for. We can't go there. But I was doing a bit. There are lines in the same. <laughs> honestly, honestly, a good bit is to do, like, the arcade... Is it arcade kids who made Sonic Dreams? Arcane kids. That's arcane that's kids? Zero. But you make yes. like um, PS One versions of like like platformers of like really serious films. So it's like Twelve Years a Slave platformer, <laughs> Schindler's List, the Schindler's platformer. List is not good, I was thinking of one like, of the 9/11 uh, movies. Yeah, 1993, <laughs> in in incredibly loud and extremely close. <laughs> Requiem the for NBA. a Dream. <laughs> just like make and just make them. Jeez. Like I'm just thinking of like PS1 oh, Silent oh, Hill yeah. style video games. It's, just oh, all, it's like 99% uh, stealth. Yeah, Chandler's so List, but it plays like Sly Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> There's strangers in the house. <laughs> Hide in the far. closet. I don't know that I can. We're right on the edge, and I don't know that I can contain myself from saying. Yeah, something. JJ. Sorry about that. <laughs> um. Anyways, let me hit the outro here, folks. Chris, Ian, thank you so much for joining me and talking about J.J. Abrams and how incredibly loud and close he is to finishing his next film. Um, folks, we are Subpixel. And finishing all over. <laughs> finishing all over. 
We are Subpixel. Uh, we uh, Subpixelfilms.com will bring you straight to our link tree that sends you to all sorts of delicious places like our Twitch or our YouTube or this very podcast feed and our Twitter. So please go there and find that. Uh, we have lots of things in the pipeline. So if you're a fan of Subpixel, Halucha, uh, there will be things happening soon. Uh, so get looking forward to the month of august which is so soon um as the as tomorrow is july i thought you were gonna say may for a second i'm gonna be like uh well so look forward to january (laughs) um so get excited for that uh we're actually you guys in q2 cooking up some stuff which has gotten me excited and gotten uh ian excited and kyle and the other guy um jake uh, Bonzo. <laughs> Bonzo. Oh, Bonzo's have Michael's happy. Um, anyways, we will be back, I believe. Ian, are, is there a Sunday service? There is a Sunday service this there Sunday. Sunday service? This Sunday, folks. All you Chris and Christians, tune in for yeah. Sunday service. Well, real quick, real quick I, I want to apologize. Apparently, the Lord picked an awful day for the Sabbath because Sundays are just really busy, so it's yeah. hard for us to do Sunday service. Man, fuck you, God. Uh, anyways, <laughs> yeah, folks, Jesus. we're Subpixel, and we'll see you all next week. <laughs>